Um, my title's got a, a big word in it, uh, revolutionising evidence synthesis and use. Um, I'm going to present one project that I think does have the potential uh, to revolutionise the way that we are currently synthesising and understanding our evidence. This is a, a welcome a collaborative award from the an award collaborative award from the Wellcome Trust, um, and uh, it's a collaboration between uh, behavioural scientists, um, computer scientists, where the bulk of the computer scientists are at the IBM Research Lab in Dublin, and uh, system architecture, which uh, is pulling it all together. Um, plus, uh, we have a range of consultants and PhD students. Ah. Okay. The vision of the project is um, to develop an understanding of human behaviour to answer variants of what I'm calling the big question, which is, when it comes to behaviour change interventions or policies, what works compared with what, for what behaviours, how well, for how long, with whom, in what setting, and why? Now, whether we're a researcher or a policymaker or a practitioner, we don't ask questions that are quite so complicated, but we're all asking variants of that question. Uh, so in the previous session, there was um, touching on the fact that with low-income groups, uh, behavioural uh, support <coughs> seemed to be engaging and working well in some situations, but not others. We need to know what's the explanation for that. Um, and what we're proposing to do is to be able to address questions at this level of complexity. And I'll take you through how we're um, doing that. Uh, why did I embark on uh, such an ambitious project? Uh, twofold. One was uh, eight ye years on NICE's Public Health Interventions Advisory Committee, um, where we would have, minister have uh, questions that came from ministers, um, we spent some time translating them to actually researchable, addressable questions. Um, then they went out for uh, systematic reviewers. Uh, we got preliminary evidence. We'd discuss it. We'd get things field tested. We'd get cost effectiveness reviews. We'd discuss it some more. And after a couple of years or so, uh, we'd come out with some uh, loosely evidence-based recommendations. Why were they loosely? Because there was uh, sparse evidence often, contradictory evidence, etc. By the time we came out with our recommendations, life's moved on, and maybe the people who asked the questions were no longer there or no longer interested. Also working uh, many years I spent as a consultant uh, with our Department of Health, and uh, as I'm sure all of us know, policymakers do not work at that pace. Uh, one has to address questions very quickly. Currently, we don't have the tools uh, to do that in a thoroughly informed way. Uh, so. Uh, coming to the conclusion that our current methods for synthesising evidence aren't fit for the purpose, um, given the scale of the problems we're trying to address. Too slow, partial evidence integrated poorly. The other motivation was my own frustration with the slow advance of behavioural uh, science, uh, partly due to interventions being very poorly reported with different terms of the same things, and our theories being quite poorly specified, overlapping, all of this meaning there's very slow accumulation of knowledge. And what I'm going to present, I think, is going to address both these uh, issues. So specifically in the project, uh, the challenge of research conduct with, uh, as we know, the evidence, we have huge diversity of research methods and topics, inconsistency and incompleteness in reporting. Uh, we're developing what's called an ontology of behavior change interventions, which I will uh, quickly present to you in a bit. Uh, secondly, uh, resource limitations. We just have insufficient human resources and actually brain power uh, to address these kind of complex questions, given the increasing volume of research. I mean, it's estimated many hundreds of evaluations of behaviour change interventions are published every day. Uh, what's the solution? Using automated literature searching and study feature extraction. Thirdly, research findings, equivocal or contradictory findings, sparseness uh, relative to the variety of behaviours, interventions, contexts, and the complexity of interactions between our intervention components with each other, also with contexts and with the target uh, behaviours. Our solution is using machine learning and reasoning algorithms for evidence synthesis and interpretation. So uh, in diagrammatic 
um, form. We have all this uh, messy evidence growing faster than we can keep up with. Uh, what we want to uh, turn this into is well-organized, useful scientific insights. So firstly, up-to-date estimates of the effectiveness of behavior change interventions, unpacking the reasons for heterogeneity in intervention effectiveness, and generating new testable hypotheses about behavior change. How are we going to achieve this? Uh, with artificial intelligence, natural language processing, machine learning, and uh, an ontology that will provide an organizing structure to guide um, the machine learning and artificial intelligence processes. And this structure will be used to structure the literature. So here's a, a, a schematic uh, version of the upper level behavior change intervention ontology. So um, how do I? Oh, yes. Uh, great. OK, so here we have uh, the intervention, um, which has content, various behavior change techniques, and uh, various aspects of delivery, mode of delivery, source, etc. Uh, here we have our outcome behavior. Uh, the intervention changes the behavior through a variety of mechanisms of action. However, the extent to which the intervention does have an influence on the mechanisms of action will uh, partly depend on the exposure of that intervention, which itself depends on the reach. We heard earlier about uh, population-wide um, interventions, but also the engagement. As we know with digital inter interventions, it's not enough to have high reach. One also needs good engagement. Uh, so these will uh, moderate this, as will the population and the setting. Um, so one has to understand the interactions between all of these things in order to understand the value of one's outcome behavior. So think of this as just one group in a trial, one scenario we're calling it, and we have many different scenarios. Um, we don't call them control groups, you've got intervention group one, two, and three, because often there's a lot of very active stuff going on in so-called um, control groups in behavioral trials. Um, so that's uh, the very top level. Under each of these entities uh, sit a huge number of ontologies uh, with many hundreds of entities and uh, relationships. And during the course of this next year, we'll be publishing uh, the suite of those um, ontologies. <coughs> um, uh, Harry also mentioned in terms of complexity, adaptation, we're also building in uh, the temporal dimension, tailoring and adaptation, which is increasingly recognized as incredibly uh, important, especially with uh, digital technologies. So translating what I've just shown you in schematic into more of an ontology where the relationships between these are um, outlined, this is exactly what I've shown you, but in a more ontological um, format. Um, so we're doing this for the intervention in its context, but also alongside that, importantly, an ontology that also is um, the study methods. It's the way in which the comparisons are made, because all of this needs to be documented too. So basically, an evaluation report um, will be annotated or coded in relation to all of these entities and under each single one of those circles, a very complex, large uh, ontological structure. Sorry, I'm just whizzing through this. It'll give you an idea, I hope. Um, so we're building uh, what we're calling a knowledge system. So the knowledge system is everything in the square box. Um, we have the evaluation reports uh, on the left-hand side uh, here. Um, which are informing our annotations. Now, at the beginning, we've got a whole team of behavioral scientists annotating um, hundreds and hundreds of evaluation reports uh, to begin with smoking cessation um, and uh, doing so structured by the ontology, informing the database, and this is uh, being queried and informed by um, synthesis and interpretation uh, from the machine learning and artificial intelligence. So this is a, a schematic of what we're doing. Now, the interface uh, can be human users or other uh, computer 
uh, programs. I should say all of what we're doing is uh, open science and uh, we're gathering collaborations as we go on. So as soon as we produce anything, whether it's uh, behavioural or computer science or the system architecture, it will be all up on open science framework for other people to use. So um, just to give examples, a couple of examples of possible users of this system, uh, we have um, the uh, two-way interaction between those people who are using this system because they can also feed back into it, but the behavioural scientists may ask, what mechanisms of action are likely to account for the effect of X on Y? This must, might, may be somebody who's testing and developing uh, theory. On the other hand, we might have a public health policymaker who's saying, what do I need to do to bring about this change in this population? So uh, to finish, headlines of what I've been saying, we're using b both uh, machine learning and rule-based algorithms. Um, the AI system will extract, synthesize, and interpret relevant information. One thing to say is the areas of the world where there's greatest need in terms of health are also those parts of the world with least uh, research investment and direct evidence. So one of the um, hopes of what we'll be able to do is be able to use this system to much more uh, accurately uh, infer and generalize from what we do know to what we don't know. The scale of evidence uh, that can be analyzed by these computational methods will allow the system to generate new hypotheses and advance our understanding of human behavior and answer questions with up-to-date evidence tailored to use need and con uh, context. As I said, the first case study is in smoking cessation. So the idea is the system is scanning the whole world literature and um, the system architect team are developing uh, a user-based system so people can easily use it to answer their questions and get uh, intelligently synthesized, up-to-date evidence uh, to address that. Um, with two things, with level of confidence, so there may be various recommendations with different confidences attached, and also a transparent account of the method uh, that was taken to um, achieve the, the recommendation. Uh, now, I realise I've had to skim through this very quickly. Anybody who'd like to know uh, more about this, uh, the protocol paper is uh, published in Open Access, a journal called Implementation Science. All the methodological details in the supplementary files. Um, however, things have developed enormously since we've uh, published that, and the um, website address is below. And also on the reception desk, I left um, some material about the project if you'd like to find out more about it. Thank you.